Hello again, welcome back. Uh, it's been requested that I show how to install one of these Tesla style stereos in a Chevy Cruze. I've had this one for about a year and uh, later on in the video I'll put a timestamp up here. I'm going to do sort of a review looking back over the last year since the first video that I put up about this thing and, and say a little bit more about my thoughts on it as time has gone on and, and how my opinion may or may not have changed about certain things. Um, so uh, if you're more interested in that, just jump ahead and you can skip this how-to if you know how to take this stuff apart already. Um, as I recall, the only tools that I need are going to be a 932nd socket-headed screwdriver, um, a flat blade or maybe a, a butter knife, something to pry things with, and uh, I like to use one of these sort of dental pick tools with a nice sharp tip on it or something hook-like. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, let me get this out of the way. So I like to start down here uh, by the shifter and stick a flat blade uh, down here underneath this to start prying it up. And if you start pulling things up, it'll snap very <laughs> loudly. Um, and you just kind of wiggle this off and it will pop away. And there is a cable attached right here to this traction control toggle switch. You can leave that connected and uh, just kind of set this stuff out of the way as best you can. If it's still in your way, uh, you can, <laughs> I don't want to deal with figuring out how to disconnect this, but uh, I know I've done this in the past without having to, oh, there's a se separate uh, connector here too for the lights that backlight these shifts. So if you just kind of wiggle this away here, um, and I noticed that this just popped out or slid out. Sorry, it's been a while since I took this stuff apart, but it will slide back into this sort of holding position. But if you pop it off of that, it'll give you a little bit more slack and you can just set this stuff aside. Uh, next, you get your 932nd screwdriver. And there are two screws that hold this little cubby thing here that hold your change and Burt's Bees, whatever else you put in there. So start unscrewing these. Oops. This thing's not blocking your view of anything important. Uh, with those screws out of the way, that just lifts right out. Set that aside. Um, and then down here in the corners, there are two more screws here and two more screws here. And I see two down here as well in these extreme corners, but I don't think you need to remove those. So let's uh, see what happens here is once these four screws are out, you can start lifting up under here. And this will come away pretty easily. Although I'm noticing now that it's butting up against this. That's where this hook tool thing comes into play here. If you come up here to the corner where this black meets the gray and just stab into this to kind of get behind the plastic that makes up your vents. You can pop that out and sort of work your way around with your fingers to get underneath from the bottom. And this is really stiff, but uh, don't be afraid to be aggressive with it. That's what it looks like from the other side. There's nothing attached to this. It's just these tabs here that are the hardest things to kind of fight against. And uh, a little bit of catch here on that side and on this side. Um, I can see if you know where to go with a flat blade or a butter knife and you stab in from this side, if you're able to clear this, you ought to be able to hook on the top and then slide this out pretty, pretty easily. So that's how that comes out. So once this is exposed and these four screws down here are loose, this will wiggle. They in their video were grabbing up here and trying to yank this straight out and I found that it seems to come more easily if you lift up from the bottom and just sort of, and I'm going to... Uh, move my stick shift here for a second. If you lift up like that, those tabs just come right away. And you can also set this aside and leave all those cables attached. There's enough slack to get it out of your way. I'm going to put that in the park. Um, now, in the factory stereo, what we would be looking at here, if it were still there, 
would be the front of this CD changer, which originally fit right here. These that little pass through, and there's a screw hole that lines up with this, and it just falls right into this. And then above that is this little LCD display. This might look a little different if you have the color version. And uh, there is a cable that would run into the back of this as well. Um, this would just, I believe, pop right out. I don't think any screws held this in, but I could be wrong. Um, and if there were any, they would probably fall right there. I don't remember. I do have two extra screws sitting in this box that I set everything aside in, so maybe that, that's what they were. Um, and then with the rest of this, um, there were... I think that was about it. I think, I think that just fit right up here and would pop away after you remove this lower section with the CD player and the amplifier or whatever uh, electronics are in there. Um, and so that would open things up. Now on, on the back of the stereo unit you, itself, you would have a connector for your wiring harness from the factory wiring harness and the you know, car wiring and the connector for your antenna. You just disconnect those and I'll show you in a second that this connection here has sort of a camming lever that would uh, if you move it would help kind of decouple this it locks it in place otherwise and that's also uh, there's a wiring harness that's included with the stereo that basically mimics the connection type on the back of this stereo so that they also kind of interlock and, and are, are stuck together um, I'll go ahead and pop this open even though it's running. I'm not afraid of anything becoming disconnected. So when you go to install this stereo, it's only held in place by these two screws down here in the lower corners. And this just kind of tucks up underneath the dash a little bit. And that's all that holds it in place apart from the ventilation that surrounds it. So you guys are going to get a little... Uh, I was too lazy to take pictures and stuff when I first did this. I wish I had when I first installed it, but now you get to see what the wiring situation looks like. It is a mess. It's very cramped. And I'll try to tuck or pull this out as carefully as I can. So, on the back of this stereo, and, and by the way, when you first get this, there's of course nothing connected to the back. This wiring harness, uh, ties in and if you were to trace this here's your as I mentioned earlier your coupling thing that hooks into the factory wiring and that fans off to several other connections um, but basically there's two fan outs here this is all coming from wire or your factory wiring so that's your power input that's your speaker outputs um, basics common stuff like that this second fan out goes to this bank of RCA cables that are mostly inputs, uh, right video input, whatever you would use that for. Video outputs, I suppose, you know, if you really want to deck things out, you could put displays on the back of your headrest for your passengers to watch a movie or something like that, but I don't care for any of that. There's also an external connection for your radio antenna that you disconnected from the back of that stereo earlier. Um, but all of this just plugs into its, each other. Um, there's no need for soldering there's no wire splicing necessary you don't need to you know butt cables up together or, any, or individual wires I mean and really as, as, as far as this fan out is concerned the only one of these inputs that I'm using is for the rear camera which was not factory I installed that from third party that was like a $20 camera I, I drilled a hole in my trunk to mount it and that was it um, the only other thing that you'll notice when you get this is I have it stuck up here. You probably can't see it, but it's about the size of a hockey puck. It's a little speaker that ties into this mess of wiring harness that they send you, and that's what plays back your turn signal, clink, 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 clink sounds, as well as um, your door is ajar when you, you know you got the keys in the ignition, but the car's not running. So I can't demonstrate that right now because I got the AC running and the car's running. It's hot out today. Um, that's that's about it. Not much. I, I wish I could, you know, I don't really want to disconnect all of this stuff. Uh, here is 
the cable that originally ran to the back of the display that was up here at the top, that ties in with this wiring harness that you get sent. You notice how it all kind of gets meshed together here. So if we were to trace this, we've got a core wiring harness for inputs and speaker outputs, and that falls along to about here, and it fans off a couple different ways. One goes off to the back of the stereo, this goes to a CAM bus decoder, uh, which is included. It's a part of the harness itself. You don't have to plug this in. It's already attached when you get it. Um, so it's just plug this in, plug that in, plug this in. Here's an antenna for your Wi-Fi that is included, a little stubby thing. Um, here's a connector port for your external GPS antenna, which, by the way, um, and I'll talk a little more about this uh, later when it comes to the second thoughts part of the video. Um, this is not the original external antenna. I bought this after uh, maybe using the stereo for two or three months and determining that uh, it was a flaky antenna. And I replaced it with a new one that cost about $14 or $15 off Amazon. I haven't had a problem with it since. A majority of the cabling fits well in the upper half where this display unit used to be, so you can start gradually kind of find a way to finagle things into a, a way that uh, uh, will sit up there and it's not very easy but that's the way all car stereos are when you you know go aftermarket and you start doing it yourself and you're dealing with third-party wiring harnesses and stuff like that I leave the fan out for the inputs down below and look at that, um, we're right where we need to be. So these two screws can go back, this fan out can be tucked in a little bit further down here. There's a lot of space back there where the, the CD player and amp unit used to be. This is just extra slack that I synced up with a little twist tie. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. So you can just get your screws started. Of course, you don't wanna do this while the car is running. You don't wanna install the stereo while the car is running, of course. I would recommend disconnecting the fuse that runs to the entertainment area of your car before you start work on this. I have occasionally seen um, stories where someone installed one of these. So there was a comment in there somewhere where they just finished putting it in and it didn't work and they discovered that while they were installing it they had blown a fuse somewhere along the way. Um, so you want to be careful with that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's uh, that's all there is to it. There's, it's it's a pretty simple install. Um, so I guess while I'm putting this back together, I'll start talking about um, my opinion about the stereo over over the years. It's sort of not years, but months. It's been about one year since I purchased this. Uh, so thinking back about the first video that I did and, and uh, my enthusiasm about the thing. Tempering a little bit of that. I had mentioned earlier, for, for example, that the GPS antenna was not very uh, effective. It would seem to work better, I noticed, uh, up here, I think maybe just at the edge of the frame, you'll see this uh, third party or this other external antenna that I bought. Um, I noticed that the original one in the winter time was really flaky. It didn't really want to show me anything about where I was located at. And uh, I had noticed that in the winter, if this had slid over my defroster while I had the heater on full blast, after about a couple of minutes, it would start to work again. And it would very consistently behave that way. So I thought uh, that just kind of lent more to the theory that uh, this was an antenna issue and not a head unit problem. So I finally bit the bullet and spent, you know, a mere $15 to uh, get another antenna. And that solved that. I do still have a problem on very rare occasion where uh, GPS uh, doesn't 
doesn't really reflect any uh, change in location at all, and and it's more of a steady, constant. Like it, it, it doesn't it doesn't give an inkling that it's going to work eventually. It just seems to solidly not be responding, and uh, a simple reboot of the head unit fixes that. But like I said, it's extremely rare. I might come across that once every couple of months, and it's it's a minor minor nuisance. And uh, the, the quickest way to reboot your console is to go into settings. You get here, system settings. Scroll down to the bottom and tap save and reboot. So that's a quick way to reboot. Um, it looks like I forgot a couple screws when I was putting that together. Oh, my little the cubby thing. That's what I forgot to put back in. Um, what else? So, um, one of the things that I demonstrated in the video originally was, uh, this is an Android platform. You can open up a Play Store to install additional apps, and I had Spotify installed, I had web browsers installed, PDF readers installed. PDF reader comes stock, though, because that's how the manual is delivered. Um, so, I removed as many apps as were not necessary, and also basically decided that um, using this, the head unit to run anything other than the essentials. And for me, the only thing I care to run is ways for navigation and nothing else. Um, it, it was just, it's, 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 it's a bit much for this thing. It's not got a very fast processor. It's probably like a one gigahertz, four core, um, some, some sort of processor like that. And uh, I just don't think it uh, is, uh, it doesn't work very well when it comes to multitasking, in my opinion. But having said that, driving around trying to multitask <laughs> on a car stereo isn't really the safest thing to do. That's backwards. So you're better off not trying to hold yourself up to thinking that you're going to be switching back and forth to doing tasks. I have used things like CarPlay, uh, Apple CarPlay, and rental vehicles, and uh, I really enjoyed that experience. It was a lot snappier. It was nice to have Siri uh, integrate and allow me to just tap a button and it would, you know, use voice commands, and I could send text messages without looking at anything, and it would read text messages back to me. And that kind of integration is nice, but you know, you can. You can still do that with a phone. You, you need a phone to do that anyway, uh, without a head unit. Um, it'd be nice if it's up on the screen, but you know, it's all voice commands. You don't need to be looking at anything necessarily to, to do all that stuff in the first place, right? So, not a huge, you know, huge loss in my opinion. Um, but you know, it's it is a little desirable. It's nice to have that there. Um, okay, so um, another thing that came up, and, and I have not heard from anybody that confirmed whether or not this works yet, is uh, someone had installed one of these recently in a system, or in a, in a car that had uh, volume controls built into their steering wheel. I don't have that on my car, so I never was able to test it. But I have noticed that if you go into your settings, and there is a wheel settings option here, that looks like there might be a way to pair buttons up like if i would assume i haven't tried this because i'm probably going to screw something up because i don't have a steering wheel that does any of this but i would think because it, it says please select a button below to pair swc i don't know what swc means but i would imagine it may be something like okay press this button for volume down press this button over here for volume down it's like okay now we know what to listen for for that button press on the CAN bus network, if that's how that works, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, another kind of quirky thing that I noticed when I first got this, um, there was a bug that happened shortly after I recorded the video that caused this back button that's over here in the left lower corner to not do anything when you tapped it. It would register a key press. You could see the uh, color of that button change when you hit it, but nothing would happen. Um, so that was annoying, and the fix for that was to go into not not settings to do a factory reset, but instead to go into when you tap settings, there's a more settings tab up here, 
and this opens up the Android settings panel that you're familiar with if you have an Android phone, for instance, or a tablet. And somewhere in here, um, I think it might have been this backup and reset, perhaps. Factory data reset? I, uh, maybe? That might have been it. I don't remember exactly. But that um, took about 10 or 15 minutes to do a, a kind of a, a clean installation. But when I did that, some of the apps that came with this stereo, including the manual, <laughs> disappeared. Um, the Play Store was still there, um, and maybe one or two other apps that I don't need. Um, and then one other really annoying quirk was it screwed up my uh, keyboard settings and I had to, and this may not have been the only fix, uh, but I couldn't find an English keyboard after that refresh, so I had to take uh, an APK file of Gboard, which is the Google Keyboard app, and sideload it in here by going into, I believe there was a, a file browser app that had been left behind, and I was able to uh, use that to browse uh, to the the APK file, run it to install, and then go into, um, where is it, language and inputs, and then pick out Gboard, and then for some reason after that, and see, I'm, you know, I might not have had to do that, I might have been poking on the wrong things and not looking in the right spot, but sud suddenly this AOSP default English keyboard uh, showed up, and, and I was able to use it again. Um, so that, you know, that allows me to do things like uh, if I go to search for stuff and I need to type in something like that, which this isn't going to work by the way because I've got Bluetooth on my personal phone disabled. It's doing the recording right now. I didn't want my audio to get screwed up because it's trying to play back through the stereo instead of record through the microphone, so I'm not doing that at the moment. Um, what else? I think that's it for any of the really annoying quirks that so I think, I think that's about it. I think that's all I uh, wanted to show you as far as taking things apart, putting it back together, and, and pointing out the little minor quirks. The main thing I use this for is to listen to audio playback over Bluetooth from my phone. And it's kind of easier because you can think of it as having a second screen at your thumb to you know toggle between podcasts or Spotify or whatever while continuing to use Waze for navigation. I'd also say or add just again, uh, and I mentioned before, it's got a slow processor. It does not run Google Maps well at all. I used Google Maps initially when I first got this and it took forever to start up and get a map going and get navigation going. Waze by comparison is so f much more lightweight and, um, and, and it, works, it works very good. Um, anyway, I'm blabbing, uh, so I'm gonna cut this sh off and, and uh, Wish you luck. Um, hope things work out for you if you get one of these. And by the way, this is an older model in my opinion, I think. There's a, there's another one a couple of people have commented with links to for an Alibaba link or something. There's a, a, Who knows where these things are manufactured, but supposedly it has Android 9 instead of Android 7, which is what this has, and a maybe a little faster processor. Whoever posted the comment, they said it runs very, very smoothly. Um, I don't feel a need to upgrade. This, this serves my needs perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the minor quirks are not deal breakers for me. They, I can understand if they are for some other people, but they, they only take a minute or two for me to resolve. And that's, that's no time at all out of a, a busy day where everything goes right. So, um, you know, take it into consideration. You might find one for cheaper than what I originally found, which I think it was around $350, give or take, something like that. And uh, that's a pretty good price considering you get a large touchscreen Android-based device that you can tweak and modify. If you come up with ideas about other apps you want to run on here, you want to take things a little bit more seriously than I do, um, you're free to try that out. And, and if you're really curious, there are uh, XDA threads XDA forum threads, if you're like into Android development, where this, not specifically this stereo, but I think this is a common platform that 
a lot of stereos have been based around that are made to fit not just in cruises but a whole bunch of different cars all kinds of different cars and trucks and things and they you know they're, they're basically all the same but they you know kind of tweak things so it's like okay you're driving a, a Ford you know Ford F-150 so it changes a picture to a Ford F-150 and, and if you're driving a car that has the ability to allow controls of the air conditioning through this instead of the knobs down here which I would hate I'm glad none of this went anywhere um, you know so on and so forth I'm blabbing now I, I I'll call it quits I talked too much in the first video anyway so I uh, hope this was helpful and thanks for watching have a good day